it's not going to be as warm as yesterday. Granted, it's going to be kind of easy to be lower than what we had yesterday. We had 80 after all in Sioux Falls, but 70 is not bad. That's still almost 30 degrees above average. Everybody else in the low to mid 60s. Again, not bad considering what month of the year it is. Over that low temperatures in the 30s, we are going to have increasing cloudiness, especially West River with some rain on the way. We'll talk about that coming up and until then, midday in Kelloway and it starts right now. Live from Killoland Media Group, midday in Killoland. Coming up, we'll have a live preview of the matchups for today's Summit League Basketball Championships with local teams in action. Club. Former Special Counsel Robert Hur testifies about his investigation into President Biden's handling of classified documents. I'm Natalie Brand on Capitol Hill with what he said about the president's memory and why he's facing criticism from both Republicans and Democrats. Good afternoon and thanks for having us in. Two South Dakota State University teams have moved on to compete in the championships at the Summit League Basketball Championships later today. Kelloland's Grant Sweeter joins us now live from the latest at the Summit League Tournament. Hey, Grant. Dan, the first four days of the Summit League Tournament has come to a close, making way for today's Summit League Championships. On the women's side, it's going to be top seed SDSU, set to battle two seed NDSU for the title. Both teams have had strong seasons, making it no surprise that they'll be meeting for the crown. The Jackson Bison have already played twice this season. Though both games were close, it was SDSU who claimed the two victories. They're looking to advance to their second straight NCAA tournament while NDSU is seeking their first ever Summit League championship win. On the men's side, it'll be top seed SDSU against seven seed Denver. It's the first time a seven seed has played in the Summit League Championship since 2005. Denver had to earn narrow wins over Kansas City and Omaha to reach the title game. The two have already met twice, earning a season split. Denver won down in Colorado, while the Jackrabbits earned the win back in Brookings. Tip-off is set for 8.30 for that game, and both games can be seen on CBS Sports Network. And Kelloland Media Group's going to have plenty of coverage throughout the day. That includes a live blog of both games, which you can see on Kelloland.com. And then we're going to have plenty of live updates on Kelloland News all throughout the evening. Reporting live in Sioux Falls, Grant Sweeter, Kelloland Sports. Bright lights on the basketball court, sunny skies outside, huh, Adam? Yeah, I, you can't lose. You, no, you truly can't. We have great weather outside right now. It's also not as windy as it was yesterday. And while it's not going to get as warm as it did on Monday, we're still going to be well above average for this time of year. This time we'll start west and go out to Pennington County. There's Rapid City, 56 out there with a north wind of 14 miles per hour. You can see downtown in the distance. It'll be a nice afternoon to get on out there. Maybe even uh, have lunch outside. Uh, goodness knows I would not be surprised if a lot of people did that here in Sioux Falls. 57 as we hit the lunch hour. Uh, northeast wind at 7 miles per hour. And again, notice that beautiful blue sky above. It's going to be looking a little more gray as we head uh, later into the week. But Hey, you know what? We got a couple of really nice days. I think we can handle a little bit of less than ideal weather. 54 right now in Brookings, 56 for Watertown, 53 Yankton, 56 Worthington and Marshall, 59 in Phillip, 55 for Pine Ridge, Spearfish and Faith, but a cooler 45 in Mitchell as well as Custer. And speaking of cooler, yeah, we are cooler now compared to yesterday, especially from winter to Yankton and then up I-29 Sioux Falls into Sisseton. Uh, but we'll see that difference uh, become more pronounced as we go uh, later into the week. We're not talking about a true blue free fall like what we had, what, a couple of weeks ago where we had a 50 plus degree difference, but it'll be noticeable all the same. Winds, speaking of noticeable, are noticeably more calm or calmer. I'm not sure. I'll have to ask my wife. She's got the English degree here. Uh, still, it's going to be a nice afternoon out there with a bit of a breeze out of the south, though, starting to develop if you're West River. We do have a lot of sunshine, even with a surface area of low pressure uh, draped over the western half of South Dakota. But uh, with basically no moisture to work with, we don't really have any showers to worry about. Not yet, at least. And that is going to be the key phrase as we do have some of that coming around sooner 
rather than later. Highs today in the 60s and low 70s across southeastern Kelloland. And we'll still do pretty well up to the northeast in the low to mid 60s with a nice healthy mix of sun and clouds. We'll have a little more cloud cover though out west, especially later in the day. But still, get out there and enjoy it if you can. 60s to near 70, the latter more likely toward Valentine and winter. We'll go through the rest of your seven day forecast, which does feature that reality check I mentioned uh, coming up in a little bit. All right, thank you, Adam. A lane closure might affect your commute near downtown Sioux Falls. Two eastbound lanes on West 11th Street will be closed at South Spring Avenue. This work is expected to be done by the end of the day. Drivers are urged to use caution and reduced speeds while traveling near the construction area and may want to consider alternate routes. Lawmakers on both sides of the aisle had critical questions for special counsel Robert Hur as he testified about his report looking into President Joe Biden's handling of classified material. Natalie Brand has details from Capitol Hill. Former special counsel Robert Hur defended his year-long probe seeking not to prosecute President Biden after finding he willfully retained classified materials after the end of his vice presidency. We did not, however, identify evidence that rose to the level of proof beyond a reasonable doubt. Because the evidence fell short of that standard, I declined to recommend criminal charges against Mr. Biden. Republicans on the committee called it a double standard. I think it would be toxic to the rule of law on its face if it was just two ordinary citizens. But the fact that the only person being prosecuted for this offense happens to be the president's political opponent makes this an unprecedented assault on our democracy. Democrats compared Biden's actions to former President Trump's documents case. According to the indictment, he not only refused to return the documents for months, but he also obstructed justice by enlisting others to destroy evidence and then to lie about it. President the Her report noted President Biden couldn't remember the timeline of certain key dates. CBS News reviewed the transcript of the five-hour interview, shedding light on an exchange where President Biden recalled the day and month his son Beau died, but White House lawyers reminded him of the year. What I wrote is what I believe the evidence shows and what I expect jurors would perceive and believe. Her says he does not believe he disparaged the president unfairly, but says it was relevant to explain his decision. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Capitol Hill.